Hi, I'm Sui. I am a project lead for creating concept map. Today's concept map is approach to a child with faltering growth, created by our clinical teaching fellow Zahu. When we approach to the patient with faltering growth, the first thing we need to consider is, my patient really experiencing faltering growth? Faltering growth, also known as failure to thrive or undernutrition is used to describe inadequate weight gain expected for a young person's age and gender. To assess if a young person is experiencing faltering growth, we have to plot their current weight on the growth chart appropriate for their age and gender. By looking at the trend of their previous weights plotted on the growth chart, we consider filtering growth when it meets one of the this criteria. For example, when the current weight falls across one or more centiles and their birth weight was less than the ninth centile. If my patient is experiencing filtering growth, the second question is, what are the possible causes? The causes of filtering growth are often due to a combination of factors and we will visit some possible causes. We need to bear in mind that the patient often come in with vague symptoms and these can present in multiple conditions. The diagnosis may be blur if they have comorbidities and of course, they can also have more than one cause for their illness. This is a case for filtering growth as they are often a combination of factors causing this. It is then our responsibility as a good clinician to take a thorough history and perform a thorough examination to gain the information we need to wait out our differential diagnosis or possible causes before coming up with the most likely causes of illness. When considering the causes of filtering growth, we can split it to many domains such as biological factor, perinatal complications, inadequate intake, underlying medical conditions, and increased demand in calorie and social circumstances. The list here is not exhausted and merely add as a guide for your thinking process. For example, in the biological domain, maybe your patient was born prematurely. Maybe they are small for their gestational age, but healthy with it. Maybe there is a constitutional delay in their growth or because of perinatal complications. These can be differentiated from each other with information gathered from history taken as well as from our clinical examination. Perhaps from your patient history, you have gathered that they have not had adequate intake of calories. We then need to think of the possible reason why. For example, is it a mechanical cause? Is there a difficulty in chewing or swallowing of the food? as seen in the neuromuscular conditions. Is it painful to chew or swallow food at this time? As you can see in ENT infections. Maybe there's a psychological reason as to why there was an inadequate intake. For example, are they currently unwell leading to poor appetite? Do they have a very strict preference for certain foods? Avoiding certain color, avoiding certain texture, avoiding certain smell, avoiding certain flavor, avoiding certain shapes as seen in food aversion or avoidance, and also social causes. Do they need an underlying, do they have an underlying medical condition that can lead to increased output or an increased metabolism? Here, I have split the medical condition by system. For example, gastrointestinal, cardiovascular, and endocrine. Under gastrointestinal, I have further divided it to acute and chronic illness. There are many ways to categorize this differential, and there is no detected right or wrong way. 
some good suggestion would be by the system or timeline as seen above. I suggest you read at on the various conditions to allow you the knowledge to differentiate them among each other. Bear in mind that they have some overlapping features. For example, you may find that your patient is experiencing vomiting, leading to an increased loss and therefore have faltering growth. Vomiting can be a symptom for many medical conditions, but for example, when I compare reflex and gastroenteritis, there may be associated diarrhea with gastroenteritis, but not with reflex. And there may be a history of small vomits only after feeding, which is more supportive of reflex than gastroenteritis. We need to always consider our patient as a whole, not just when they are in hospital. This is why taking a good social history is important. In the case of peltary growth, there may also be an additional social circumstance that makes it more difficult to obtain food, example poverty. We also need to remember that our patient may be a young person that needs a guidance and help in feeding, and this is impaired if their carer has a medical or mental illness. Safeguarding causes such as neglect, it's also important to rule out to keep our patients safe and should always be the back of our mind. In summary, this is our approach when encounter with a symptom of presentation, not just for filtering growth. We always start by thinking of all the possible causes of this symptom and presentation and categorizing differential diagnosis in our mind. Then we can have a more targeted approach when taking history that is, not just asking the question from a template, but actually using open and closed questions to give us the information we need to wait out our differential diagnosis. With this and clinical findings from examination of our patient, we can then conclude the most likely cause of illness and start management. Thank you so much for listening.